After studying this module, you shall be able to number one, understand various forms of social influence. Number two, identify regions as to why people conform and the ways of resisting conformity. Number three, analyze the concept and techniques of compliance. And number four, learn about obedience. Social influence is a common part of our lives. There are many ways in which people produce changes in other people's behavior, attitudes and beliefs. It is the area of social psychology that explores how people are affected by the real or imagined presence of other people in their lives. Social influence refers to the ways in which the opinions and attitudes of one person affect those of the other person. Social influence can occur between individuals as well as in the context of social groups. Within groups, two types of social influence can be found. Social control and social change. The power of social influence helps in understanding why good people sometimes do bad things. The influence may be intentional or unintentional, direct or indirect as well. Generally, three major forms of social influence are present. Conformity, Compliance and Obedience. Conformity is the tendency to change one's beliefs or behaviors to match the behavior of others. Conformity refers to changes in behavior caused by other people and does not refer to effect of other people on one's attitudes or beliefs. Conformity encompasses compliance and obedience because it refers to any behavior that occurs as a result of others' influence. Conformity involves changing one's behaviors in order to fit in with the other people. In some cases, this social influence might involve agreeing with or acting like the majority of people in a specific group. Most people conform to the norms of their groups or societies most, if not all the times. A person may conform to the groups in order to be accepted and to avoid rejection or to obtain important information. Dresch and Gerald named these two possibilities, normative influence and informational influence. Influence springs from our desire to be liked and from our desire to be right, that is, to have accurate understanding of the world as well as the impact of cognitive processes that lead us to view the world as fully justified. Researchers have found that people conform for a number of different reasons. In many cases, looking to the rest of the group for clues for how we should behave can actually be helpful. Other people might have greater knowledge or experience than we do. So following their lead can actually be instructive. In other cases, be confirmed to the expectations of the group in order to avoid looking foolish. This tendency can become particularly strong in situations where we are not quite sure how to act or where the expectations are ambiguous.
compliance refers to a change in behavior that is requested by another person or group the individual acted in some way because others asked him or her to do so even though it was possible to refuse or decline in psychology compliance refers to changing one's behavior due to the request or direction of another person it is agreeing with the group or changing a behavior to fit in with the group while still disagreeing with the group unlike obedience in which the other individual is in a position of authority compliance does not rely upon being in a position of power or authority over others compliance refers to our direct efforts to make others to change their behavior in specific ways situations calling for compliance take many forms these includes a friend's plea for help the pop up ads on the internet designed to lure people and the sales persons attempts to make a sale sometimes the request is up front and direct while at other times it is more of a subtle and elaborate manipulations obedience refers to acting in accordance with the direct order or command stanley milgram designed a series of laboratory experiments to understand the issue of obedience to authority milgram started his experiments in 1961 shortly after the trial of the world war 2 Kimmel Adolf Eichmann had begun Eichmann's defense that he was simply following instructions when he ordered the deaths of millions of Jewish stirred Milgram's interest in his 1974 book Obedience to Authority Milgram posed the question quote could it be that Eichmann and his million accomplices in the holocaust but just following orders or could be called them all accomplices unquote. the participants in the milgram experiment were 40 men recruited using newspaper ads in exchange for their participation each person was paid dollar 4.5 milgram developed an intimidating shock generator which shocks level starting at 30 volts and increasing in 15 volt increments all the way up to 450 volts the many switches were leveled with terms including slight shock moderate shock and danger severe shock the final two switches were leveled simply with triple x each participant took the role of a teacher who would then deliver a shock to the student every time an incorrect answer was produced while the participant believed that he was delivering real shock to the student the student was actually a confederate in the experiment who was simply pretending to be shocked as the experiment progressed the participants would hear the learner plead to be released or even complain about a heart condition Once the 300 volt level had been reached, the learner banged on the ball and demanded to be released. Beyond this point, the learner became completely silent and refused to answer any more questions. The experimenter then instructed the participant to treat this silence as an incorrect response and deliver a further shock. the level of shock that the participant was willing to deliver was used as the measure of obedience how far do you think that most participants were willing to do how far do you think that most participants were willing to go when milgram posed this question to a group of jail university student it was predicted that no more than 3 out of 100 participants would deliver the maximum shock 
In reality, 65% of the participants in Milgram's study delivered the maximum shocks. Of the 40 participants in the study, 26 delivered the maximum shocks while 14 stopped before reaching the highest levels. It is important to note that many of the subjects became extremely agitated, distraught and angry at the experimenter, yet they continued to follow orders all the way to the end. To summarize, social influence refers to the phenomena in which people produce changes in other people. There are many forms of social influence like conformity, compliance and obedience. Conformity is the tendency to modify one's beliefs or behaviors in order to match the behavior of others. Conformity occurs due to normative and informational influence. Many factors determine to what extent conformity occurs such as cohesiveness, group size, unanimity, etc. Resistance to conformity comes from strong need for individuality, strong need for control and many more. Compliance refers to changing one's behavior due to the request of another person. There are many different tactics people use to gain compliance like those based on liking, reciprocity, commitment, consistency, etc. Social influence refers to the ways in which the opinions and attitudes of one person affect those of the other person. Social influence can occur between individuals as well as in the context of social groups. The power of social influence helps in understanding why good people sometimes do bad things. The influence may be intentional or unintentional, direct or indirect as well. Generally, three major forms of social influence are present, conformity, compliance and obedience. According to Cialdini and Goldstein, conformity is the tendency to change one's beliefs or behaviors to match the behavior of others. Conformity encompasses compliance and obedience because it refers to any behavior that occurs as a result of others' influence. Conformity is also known as majority influence since it deals with how the majority influences the members to confirm. It also refers to the pressures on the individual to behave in accordance with social norms. In 1937, Muzaffar Sharif used the autokinetic phenomenon to study how norms emerge and how they influence the individual. Autokinetic phenomenon is one where a single stationary point of light in a dark room is perceived as moving. This phenomenon was studied in two situations, one in which the participants were alone and one in which several others were present with the individual participant. He asked single individual male college students to sit in a dark room and watch a single point of light. Each individual participant was told that the light would move and that his job was to estimate how far it moves. Many people thought the light moved only one or two inches. He reported that when placed with other individuals, the individuals influence each other and develop a social norm. Even when in the alone situation, they give responses consistent with the group norm. Sheriff's results demonstrated that in an ambiguous situation, people will confirm to the group. Ash conducted a study to investigate the phenomenon of conformity. Participants were told that they were participating in a vision test. Participants were asked to choose a line that matched the length of one of three different lines. 
When asked individually, participants would choose the correct line. When asked in the presence of confederates who were in the experiment and who intentionally selected the wrong line, around 75% of participants confirmed to the group at least once during the study. This experiment is a good example of normative social influence since participants changed their answer and confirmed to the group in order to fit in and avoid standing out. The experiments also looked at the effect that the number of people present in the group had on conformity. When just one other confederate was present, there was virtually no impact on participants' answers. The presence of two confederates had only a tiny effect. The level of conformity seen with three or more confederates was far more significant. Ash also found that having one of the confederates give the correct answer while the rest of the confederates gave the incorrect answer dramatically lowered conformity. Studies have shown that having social support is an important tool in overcoming conformity. Nearly 75% of the participants in the conformity experiments went along with the rest of the group at least one time. After combining the trials, the results indicated that participants confirmed to the incorrect group answer approximately one-third of the time. When asked the reason, in most cases, the students stated that they did not want to risk facing ridicule or that they actually believed the other members of the group were correct. When participants wrote their responses instead of speaking, conformity reduced drastically. The ASH conformity experiments are one of the most famous in psychology's history. This research has provided important insight into when, how and why people confirm. To explain as to why conformity occurs, Dosh and Gerard named two possibilities, normative influence and informational influence. Researchers have found that people confirm for a number of different reasons, like looking to the rest of the group for clues for how we should behave. Thinking that other people might have greater knowledge or experience than they do and to avoid looking foolish. Normative influence is going along with the crowd to avoid rejection and to gain approval. Informational influence springs from our desire to be right. One reason is that the behavior of other people often provides useful information and helps us to process correct perceptions of the social world. When we are highly uncertain about what is correct, informational social influence is more powerful than in situations in which we have more confidence in our ability. Some of the factors affecting conformity are Group size In many experiments, it has been seen that small groups create larger conformity effects. Increasing the number of people beyond 5 yields decreasing returns. Next is unanimity. A person faced with a unanimous majority is under great pressure to confirm. But several experiments reveal that someone who punctures a group's unanimity reduces its social power. Cohesion is the extent to which we are attracted to a particular social group and want to belong to it. Status is the evaluation of a role or a person by the group. In general, lower status people confirm more than higher status individuals. But even high status people in some situations confirm. Next is the effect of descriptive and injunctive social norms. Descriptive norms are the ones that simply describe what most people do in a given situation. In contrast, injunctive norms specify what ought to be done in a given situation. Situational norms are norms that guide behavior in a certain situation or environment. Another factor is the desire for individuation, which refers to a person's willingness to do things that publicly differentiate them from others 
or make them stand out. Such individuals are less likely to go along with the majority view and are less socially compliant. Difficult tasks can lead to both increased and decreased conformity. Not knowing how to perform a difficult task makes people more likely to confirm, but increased difficulty can also make people more accepting of different responses, leading to less conformity. Characteristics of the situation also determine conformity. People are more likely to confirm in ambiguous situations where they are unclear about how they should respond. Cultural differences also play a role. Researchers have found that people from collectivist cultures are more likely to confirm. The desire for the goal of accuracy is another factor. How we react to the beliefs held by others often depends on our perceptions of the level of consensus for those beliefs. Also, individuals often engage in more conscious and deliberate attempts to gain the social approval of others, to build relationships with them, and to enhance their self-esteem and conformity offers such an opportunity. Apart from these factors, people are frequently motivated to confirm to others' beliefs and behaviors in order to enhance or protect their self-esteem. There are many times when people resist the pressures to confirm. Atkiss carried out a meta-analysis of studies which considered the relationship between locus of control and conformity. He found that those who scored higher on external locus of control were more easily persuaded and likely to confirm than those with a low score. The desire for individuation refers to the need to maintain an individual identity which outweighs the desire to confirm. Another factor related to resistance to conformity is related to norms that encourage individualism. Some groups have informal rules that emphasize individual preferences and choices. Such norms encourage individuals to maintain an identity of their own. Another important aspect in conformity is minority influence. In this field, pioneering work was done by Moscovici. He said that minorities often challenge the dominant view and propose an alternative which is often dismissed by the majority. But when the minority refuses to be dismissed, it may make the majority reconsider their decision. Compliance refers to changing one's behavior due to the request or direction of another person. Situations calling for compliance take many forms. These include a friend's plea for help, the pop-up ads on the internet designed to lure people, and the salesperson's attempts to make a sale. Sometimes the request is upfront and direct, while at other times it is more of a subtle and elaborate manipulation. There are different techniques for gaining compliance and these are based on six main principles of compliance given by Cialdini. The first is friendship or liking. We are more likely to be influenced by friends or people we like. The next principle is reciprocity. As humans, we generally aim to return favors and treat others as they treat us. This can lead us to feel obliged to offer concessions to others if they have offered them to us. The third is commitment and consistency. We have a deep desire to be consistent. For this reason, once we have committed to something, we are more inclined to go through with it. The next principle, social validation, relies on people's sense of safety in numbers. Another principle is based on authority. We feel a sense of duty or obligation to people in positions of authority. 
The principle of scarcity says that things are more attractive when their availability is limited or when we stand to lose the opportunity to acquire them on favorable terms. For instance, we might buy something immediately if we are told that it's the last one or that a special offer will soon expire. Based on these principles, the following techniques of compliance are used in everyday life. The techniques based on friendship or liking are ingratiation, which refers to getting others to like us so that they will be more willing to agree to our requests. Flattery is one of the best ingratiation techniques. Another is self-promotion, which is informing others about our past accomplishments or positive characteristics. Impression management through ingratiation is another means by which individuals utilize the liking principle for maximal influence. The techniques based on commitment and consistency are foot in the door, which is a procedure for gaining compliance in which the requester begins with a small request and then, when this is granted, escalates to a larger one, the one they actually desired. The next technique is the low ball technique. This strategy involves getting a person to make a commitment and then raising the terms or stakes of that commitment. A core assumption regarding the success of consistency-based compliance techniques is that targets act consistently with their self-view and prior commitments in order to maintain or enhance their self-esteem. Now let's discuss the techniques based on reciprocity. The door in the face. In this approach, marketers start by asking for a large commitment. When the other person refuses, they then make a smaller and more reasonable request. Next is the that's not all technique. In this technique, once a product has been pitched, the seller then adds an additional offer before the person has made a decision. The goal is to make the offer as appealing as possible. Next are the techniques based on scarcity. The deadline technique is a technique of compliance that can be used for increasing compliance in which target people are told that they have only limited time to take advantage of some offer to obtain some item. Next is the playing hard to get technique. It involves actions by a person suggesting that they have little interest in the target person. The one towards whom playing hard to get is directed. People using this tactic let the target person know that they have other offers. Obedience refers to acting in accordance with direct order or command. Milgram designed a series of lab experiments to understand the issue of obedience to authority. The participants in the Milgram experiment were 40 men. Milgram developed an intimidating shock generator with varying shock levels. Each participant took the role of a teacher who would then deliver a shock to the student every time an incorrect answer was produced. While the participant believed that he was delivering real shocks to the student, the student was actually a confederate in the experiment who was simply pretending to be shocked. The level of shock that the participant was willing to deliver was used as the measure of obedience. 65% of the participants in Milgram's study delivered the maximum shocks. Even though many of the subjects became extremely angry at the experimenter, they continued to follow orders all the way to the end. History is replete with examples of individuals who perform extreme behaviors. Zimbardo's experiment has shown this in the context of mock prison. The researchers set up a mock prison and selected 24 undergraduate students. Then they were randomly assigned to either the prisoner group or the guard group. Prisoners were to remain in the mock prison 24 hours a day for the duration of the study. Guards were assigned to work in three-man teams for eight-hour shifts. It was observed that the guards became abusive and the prisoners began to show signs of extreme stress and anxiety. The guards began to behave in ways that were aggressive and abusive towards the prisoners, while the prisoners became passive and depressed. 
According to Zimbardo and his colleague, the Stanford Prison Experiment demonstrates the powerful role that the situation can play in human behavior. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. Social influence refers to the phenomena in which people produce changes in other people. There are many forms of social influence like conformity, compliance and obedience. Conformity is the tendency to modify one's beliefs or behaviors in order to match the behavior of others. Many factors determine to what extent conformity occurs such as cohesiveness, group size, unanimity, etc. Resistance to conformity comes from strong need for individuality, strong need for control and many more. Compliance refers to changing one's behavior due to the request of another person. There are many different tactics people use to gain compliance like those based on liking, reciprocity, commitment and consistency, etc. Obedience is most direct form of social influence. It refers to acting in accordance with direct order or command. The experiments by Milgram show that sometimes people can go to any extent just because they have to obey orders from authority. The Stanford Prison Experiment demonstrates the powerful role that the situation can play in human behavior.